It's always been my understanding that it's quite difficult to make money long term if you're trading currencies or indices, but you make that work in very short time frames, is that correct? Well, uh, I, I look at the forex market on daily charts for the, for the trend, uh, and then I look at a four hour chart for entries. Yesterday I, I looked at a 30 minute chart because I had the time to focus on the 30 minute chart. I haven't got that today. You're trading technically alone in the forex market. Uh, and uh, there's a lot of news around, it drives it one way and the other way, and your hit rate suffers. Uh, I think using VectorVest on the stock market, good quality stocks, you can get your hit rate up to 75%. On the Forex market, that comes down, and I don't care who you are, it comes down significantly. Uh, and uh, uh, if you speak to any institutional trader, uh, they'll tell you that. If your hit rate comes down, then what happens is that you get into these ghastly clusters of good and bad luck. So to illustrate that, do you ever go to the casino? I do. Okay. If you play roulette. Yeah. Okay. All right. Well, roulette is red and black. So if you look at, and there's a little white ball, yeah. which is the house edge. Okay. <laughs> That's the spread. <laughs> That's the brokerage. Uh, if you look at the scoreboard down at the bottom of the roulette wheel, you know, the electronic scoreboard. Yeah. If you look, you're going to see long runs of red, long runs of black, okay? And it should be red and black, red and black, red and black, but it's, life is not like that. You get clusters of good luck and clusters of bad luck. Your mother may told you that bad things happen in threes, okay? That's because life is mostly random, okay? And uh, in eight observations, you get a cluster of three. In other words, a half times a half times a half. Okay, and your mother could only remember eight observations, so she <laughs> says that things happen in threes. So, in a 50% system, okay, uh, you get if you uh, if you uh, the, the hit rate that's one out of two, you should be right, one out of two, you should be wrong. Okay, what's the probability of two bad ones in a row? I don't know. Okay, it's a half times a half. Okay, two bad ones in a row. That means. In a 50% system, every four trades, you have two bad ones in a row and two good ones in a row. Now, that means that if your hit rate comes down towards 50%, and many trend-following traders would sell their granny for a 50% system, most trend-following systems are less than 50%. Uh, that in four trades, you're gonna have two bad ones in a row. Now, most people will give up after two bad ones in a row, but it gets worse. What's the probability of three bad ones in a row? I don't know. A half times a half times a half. More. Okay. Which means that you get a cluster of three bad ones in a row every eight trades. You get a cluster of four bad ones in a row every 16 trades. And you get a cluster of five bad ones in a row every 32 trades. Five bad ones in a row. How good will you be in executing your system with precision after five losses in a row. Okay, and that's the challenge in the short-term markets. As the hit rate comes down, then these ghastly clusters of bad luck start. And of course, a cluster of good luck, you can have a cluster of good luck as well. A cluster of good luck, of course, is actually more detrimental to your health than a cluster of bad luck, because in a cluster of good luck, you've got a little thing between your ears here called a pituitary gland, okay? And it pumps all sorts of muti. Muti is Zulu. Uh, it's a Zulu medicine. It pumps all sorts of muti into your bloodstream. So when you leave the gym after a good workout, you feel good, eh? Yeah. All right. When I feel leave the gym after a good workout, I'm 18 again, okay? And similarly, when you have one good trade in a row, two good trades in a row, the old pituitary gland gets to work and it pumps the stuff into your bloodstream. You feel good. You become euphoric. And when you become euphoric, the uh, definition of euphoria is invincible. And you start to forget about all those position sizing, only risk half a percent. You say, let's have a big bet. When you have a run of good luck, that euphoria takes over. And most people 
in fact, go bankrupt after a run of good luck, not after a run of bad luck, because they, they think they're God and they forget about all those position sizing stuff. And it's happened to me on a few occasions that. And if you're a risk manager, the risk managers in the city are in fact coached into assessing the susceptibility of their traders to euphoria. So the big problem, and anybody who's traded for more than 10 minutes will tell you this, the big problem is getting your mind around the clusters of good luck and the clusters of bad luck as the hit rate invariably falls. Now, if you've got a system that's trend following and the darn thing goes into a range, the system doesn't work. Many people will say, well, don't trade a trend following system when it goes into a range, but you don't know the darn thing's in a range until it's been there for a while. You can put all the ADXs of this world on, it makes no darn difference, okay? The market has to go sideways for a while before you know what's in a range. Similarly, if you're buying support and selling resistance, okay, uh, and the market starts to trend, well, you're wrong. So uh, you can have lots, and then there's the noise in the market that causes you to get stopped out and stopped out. Unless your stop losses are really good, the market makers will pick them off all day and every day, and uh, the algos will then, what's left after the market makers, the algos will have a go at. So uh, your hit rate comes down, uh, and if you can be right in the forex market 55 to 60 percent of the time, you're right up there with some really good traders. You can make a heap of money with a 50 percent system. If you make three times more when you're right than you lose when you're wrong, five times three is 15, and five times one is five, that means that uh, in 10 trades, you risk a pound to make a pound. So you've got a positive expectancy system, uh, and that's great. Uh, but handling with a, a winning system that's right 65% of the time or 60% of the time that makes a fortune in paper, most people will lose with that system, unfortunately, because of these darn clusters of good luck and bad luck. And uh, if you're over 20, you must have had periods in your life where everything goes well and you've periods of your life where nothing goes well, and that's a cluster. <laughs> they happen in every facet of life, okay? Uh, and certainly, if you get to over 50 uh, and over 60, uh, hard, I, I have to say it to believe it. <laughs> if you get to over 60, you've got really good years and bad years, that's for sure. What's the best week of trading, then, that you've ever had uh, in terms of profits? Your best week? Uh, the best one without a doubt is a copper trade that I did a lifetime ago. I put the trade on uh, while I was in South Africa and I was here in London. I, I remember vividly checking a uh, broker. I, I didn't think I had any positions because I was sure that I'd been stopped out of this copper trade before I left South Africa. Uh, and I was going along to watch Celine Dion at the Royal Albert Hall. And it was, we talked about Titanic a moment ago. It was the, at that Titanic era, I don't know when that was, 1999, okay. 1997, yeah. a long time, 20 years ago. And in fact, what had happened was I'd missed the stop in copper by a tick or two. And the copper price had ran up the page and we talked about exits. It had just ignored all those fib levels. It just kept on going. And... Uh, when I opened up my brokerage account, that a local spread better here. When I opened up the uh, brokerage account, there was thousands <laughs> in it. <laughs> Completely unexpected. So I think that stands out as a wonderful trade, yeah. Yeah, that's yeah. great. Yeah. No, to not know it either. Yeah, just I didn't to know it. You know, <laughs> and I just let it run. It ran up the page for weeks on end because I didn't think I had a position, yeah. You are one of the traders that gets currencies right. Where do you think other people go wrong? Well, I get currencies right. 60 to 65 percent of the time 30 to 35 percent of the time i'm wrong uh, and uh, the the reason that i'm still around in all of these markets is that uh, when i'm wrong i lose a little bit and when i'm right i add I, I like to be three times bigger when i'm right than i am when i'm wrong so i'm not consistent in markets because of my ability to read markets better than anybody else. And in fact, I'm probably consistent in markets because I manage risk well and I am a conservative. Many of my friends say to me, David, how the hell can you be a commodities trader? You're the most conservative guy in the world. When I go to the airport to hire a car, I always take the uh, windscreen. You know, they can ask you, do you want the windscreen and do you want the tire waiver? I always take that and I take the super cover as well. And uh, they say to me, how can you be a, a trader um, and take risk 
Uh, and the reason that I'm still around after all these years and people have come and gone is that I manage risk exceptionally well and uh, the objective of doing business, whether you're in the media business or whether you're uh, in the stock market or the forex market, the objective of doing business is to do business at the least risk.